Hi and welcome to this tutorial on using DesignMate AI model generation and preliminary design tools from DesignMate in GenFEA. So we're going to start a new project and we'll specify a project title. We'll just call this DesignMate sample one and we'll specify our project location. We're going to say Hong Kong for this exercise. And again, this is important if we want to use the AI features to automatically detect relevant design codes, um, conditions, etc. So um, the reason we choose the location is purely for the AI. And of course, it looks good on the report generation from GenFEA also. Now that we've done that, we need to set up some base materials and sections in the project before we start with the model generation. So we'll add a concrete material there. So we add the um, C25 over 30. Then for sections, we're going to just add some rectangular sections from the database. We've got a 200 by 200 section that we're adding, and then also that 200 by 500 section. Now, Let's say we wanted to add a section that is not available in the database for some different sizing, then let's go and do that. So we've accessed the section library from the workspace ribbon tab. We then go to the rect um, section class and then under the designation, we're going to enter the name for the section. We'll call this one 200 by 450. And then for the H value, we're going to enter 450, of course, and for the B value 200. Finally, we click on the calculate button and this is going to calculate the cross-sectional properties for that new section that we've added. And you can see them listed on the screen there, all those values in gray. Once it's done, we click on add to project and finish. And you can see that's now been added to our current project. The next step is to add some, and this is the last step before we get to the generation, is to add some design groups. So we'll uh, we're going to create a rectangular concrete frame built for a building. So we'll do uh, two groups here, one for columns, one for beams. Now that that's done, let's go to the workspace uh, menu and click on design mate. Give it a few seconds to activate. Um, it's connecting to the online service, so it might take a second. And once it's open, you might not see the same screen. If it's the first time you're using this, you'll be presented with this screen where you need to select your service. And if you don't see it in the list, click on the Add button. Select OpenAI or whatever service it is that you want to use, like Grok or um, Google, and then enter your API key. Once you've entered your API key, you'll be able to see the models associated with that service. We're going to be using the latest ChatGPT 4.0 model from 6th of August, and I'll click on the settings there and make sure my temperature is set to zero and the output tokens are set to maximum. Temperature is the creativity. We're working with design calculations and mathematical calculations, so we don't want creativity, we want accuracy. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right, now that that's set up, we'll start a new chat. And from here, we're going to change the persona to the input workbook creator. We'll look at design mate later. First, we're going to generate some input workbooks. I'm also going to change the current folder to generation. You can add additional folders there, and that's just to categorize and um, organize your content, your chats uh, better. Right. So now I'm just going to start with a prompt question to demonstrate to you that the LLM is familiar with the GenFA input format. As you saw in the previous exercise, we can import CSV sheets and it'll automatically map the appropriate columns to the correct sheets and automatically detect them. So all we need for um, DesignMate to do is to understand the input format of GenFEA and there we can see a confirmation it does. So I'm going to say, okay, now that we've confirmed that, I want it to create um, nodes and framing elements for the following uh, specifications. And I'm going to provide some criteria here. All right, so we're telling it that we want a rectangular frame with the X direction, Y direction, distance, level, height, number of levels, and then the internal column spacing, and also that we want beams connected to all of these elements. And we'll start with the input nodes sheet to be generated. So once we've specified clearly what it is that we want, we can hit enter or click on the chat button, and you can see that Genevieve is starting, or DesignMate is starting to produce some results. And we can see a table being formulated there, and you'll notice that the Z values are all zero. So it's kind of understood what I asked it to do, but I might need to go back and clarify my instructions. Say, okay, and that's good, but I only see the level zero values. I actually wanted to see the nodes being generated for all the levels. So we're going to go ahead and just indicate that. And then let's see what it's going to produce. Right, so we let that run and we can see a table being formulated again. I've sped this up a little bit to save you from um, having to watch this. 
like paint drying, um, but it's reasonably quick. And we can see that we've reached the maximum context there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add this to an existing sheet. It's gonna be the node sheet because our CSV importer detected the import of nodes and is asking us, is that the correct sheet? We say yes, so it imports those. But we can also see that the information has been cut off. It's incomplete, this table. So we've reached the maximum context output um, through the API. So we're gonna say, okay, continue from node 121, please. And then we can see it's going to start generating the remainder of the nodes. There shouldn't be too many left. Um, I can see we're already at level 15, so there we go. So we just click on that again. And we're gonna say add to the existing sheet. It's already on nodes, so everything should be good to go. We can go to the model space, and if we just click on update, there's a lot of errors because we've got nodes with no information, so that's okay, we'll just minimize that. And then what we wanna do is just have a look at the positions, and we can see that forms the rectangular grid. If we look at the grid uh, down below in the intersections, this seems to be more or less correct. Right, now let's go to the next step and start generating the framing elements. So we'll start with the columns. So we can ask it to create a, a list of all the columns. And we can see that again, sped up a little bit, generating that list for us. Once it's finished, I'm gonna click on download um, table of CSV. It's already selected frame elements, which is correct. And if we head to the frame elements input sheet, we can see that those are placed there. I didn't mention what section size or material to use. And also um, I didn't tell it that the type should all be of type beam. It should have known that, but okay, we can very easily fix that. So all I do is I select the first row, click on the drop down, select the appropriate value, press control C, and then I'm going to highlight the remaining columns and I'm going to just click on the full range button. It's very important to use the full range button because this will populate the data correctly. Okay, so now that this has all been done, um, I can just repeat the last step there for the material. So we want that C25 over 30. Again, I select the first cell, copy it, and then click the full range button to complete. And we'll just run the update model tool and we can see there we have our columns correctly created. So now that we're happy with that, we can move on to the next step, which is generating the beam elements. So we're asking it to create the beam spanning between each of the columns in both directions. We specify the material name, the correct section name here, and the type should be beam. So you can see there is producing the list. Um, we're gonna click on download CSV, add to the existing sheet, and you can see it being added to the sheet there. And notice that the node numbering or the, the element numbering continues from the last one that um, we stopped with. So it's intelligent and smart and keeps track of that. Now that all of that is done, let's update the model. Great, so we can see we've got that frame there at the bottom. It didn't create them at all the levels, but it's really easy for us to quickly go and copy that across. So we'll right click, choose select all from group. Then we're gonna go to the model ribbon tab, choose the copy option, and we'll just specify two reference point and we can either select that from the front or the back. But as long as it's from the start to the end of any of those columns, and we can just hit apply as many times as we need to create the remaining grid uh, beam elements. Then we're gonna do a box select and just highlight all of the elements at the bottom, including the nodes, um, and we're gonna press delete. And don't worry, it won't delete the nodes when it's connected to other elements that were not selected. Again, the software is quite smart and it keeps track of all these things. So now that we've done that, we can actually see that we've got the extruded model there and it is what we expected to see, so great. Now let's look at how we can use Design Mate for preliminary design. This is the model we had before in the previous exercise where we generated our steel concrete model and we've got the results displayed here so we can see the deflections there for load combination C1. <clears throat> and we're gonna head over to our Design Mate workspace and this time we'll change the persona to Design Mate and we are creating a new chat. So from here, we're gonna select the design group and we're gonna choose Prime LLM. And now you can see why design groups are important because it's going to help us to, um, to indicate which elements we are designing. And of course, this project's based in Singapore. So when we start designing stuff, it knows where we are located. And again, just we are using the GPT-40 model. And again, if we wanted to add additional models, we can um, do that from the configure AI models by specifying an API key and selecting the appropriate model. Again, we specify the temperature as zero and the output tokens as maximum. The temperature is zero because we don't want any creativity, we want mathematical accuracy. 
Now you'll notice from the drop downs we've got concrete, steel and timber. We're selecting the steel beam verification from study. And I'm going to explain this in a second because all of this works like templates that you can customize. In this particular one, we tell it to do specific, execute a specific set of tasks. And I don't know if you saw, but at the top there, it says it's using the EN code for, which is applicable in Singapore. And it's checking for deflection, it's checking for bending, it's checking for lateral uh, torsional buckling capacity. And it's going to tell us based on all these things that it's checked that it complies. Now, if we look at the template editor, just what that dialogue and that instruction look like, you can see it's a simple text file. And within GenFEA, there is a template editor for design made design modules. And all of this is text based, but you can use the wizard here to customize and change that. So we can see we've got various inputs there. So those are our variables that will automatically appear as input dialogues. And then there's a set of instructions. So we say we want to check for bending capacity, shear capacity, deflection and lateral torsional buckling capacity. If you needed to check anything else or provide any additional instructions, you would do it here. This means that you can pretty much set up design modules for absolutely anything and any standard in the world. If you read closely, we're actually telling it to use the relevant design standard based on project location. Now on the screen, I'm just adding an additional variable to show you that it automatically pops up as input boxes and we can save this as our template or adjust this and save it under a different name and it'll automatically appear in the drop down lists there in the screen. So really great because it means it's flexible and you can set up anything you want. You'll notice some of those say member design from study and some just verification without the from study. So we can either extract results from the analysis model and use that then to create the design or we could just say we don't want to run analysis. We have some input values for forces and member properties, etc. And we want to um, use that to just quickly do a design calculation. Now we're running another one here. So we're running a check. Um, uh, on a base plate and we said that, oh, sorry, this is the rafter. So we're saying that we want to do a steel beam verification from study. So we're going to um, prime the model again, and then we're going to run the steel beam verification on the rafter design group. And again, based on the relevant standard with the um, instructions that we've provided, it's going to provide outputs. But we can also tell it, what if we changed, uh, what is the version of the standard that it used? And it says, oh, it's the EN1993, 1 of 1-2005. One okay, and it explains there why it's using it. And then I am asking what code should be used in Hong Kong, for example. So let's say we wanted to change this to Hong Kong. So it's telling me the code of practice for the structural use of steel 2011. And now I'm going to tell it, okay, based on that standard, perform the same calculations and checks, but using the standard from Hong Kong. And let's see if it can do that for us. So we're entering the prompt there and we can see, there we go. So it's starting to perform the same steps with the same instructions that we've provided. If there were different instructions in that design standard, of course, we can adjust the template to suit. Um, but there we go. It's using that and it's telling us based on the input criteria, based on the standard and based on the instructions that is um, adequate. Right now we can do, we can go back to previous chat. So if we want to go back to the one where we use that uh, column design group, then we can simply go back in our history of chats and it builds memory. So we can continue from that chat. Now, since it's columns, it means we can do a base plate design because it's associated with the columns. So we're going to say, all right, let's do a uh, base plate design from the study because we'll have the reactions in the columns design group. We enter the values there again in that template. Um, it's an example, but you can customize those templates, of course, with the input variables and the criteria that you require. So we do the same here. It runs through, it's telling us we need a 300 by 300 by 20 millimeter plate and I'm going to say can we reduce the thickness of the plate to see um, what what it responds with so it's telling me um, this is what you need to do I said yeah okay that's great um, so it says uh, we can use a 15 millimeter plate so I'm going to say perform the calcs and check please so I wanted to confirm again and do a proper thorough check and display the outputs and look at how beautifully the mathematical equations display and there we go telling us all right it's now made some adjustments and we can use a 15 millimeter plate there so really good for preliminary design I hope you found this useful and watch the next tutorial. Cheers.